Hey everybody, it's Jason Baja here and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about uh, really just being efficient with our training. Uh, and this, this works really well for people who can't put in a lot of gym time. Maybe they have limited recovery, they have busy lives. So I'm not talking about people out there who uh, have limitless limitless time to be in the gym because this this is one of the things that people have to remember a lot of this discussion that's out there that people talk about is for people who uh, make their whole life about the gym they don't have any other stuff going they're not busy right they're not particularly busy people but I think for people who are uh, and you know you're not trying to be a world-class level lifter Okay, I think this sort of approach works really well, and in some cases it will work even for the people who, who want to do that. And that is, look, come in and focus on your basic exercises, right? Find your basic exercises. In my case these days, it's the big three and pull-ups, right? Squat, bench, deadlift, pull-up. And I perform them in a way to build muscle right now, at least, you know, at this time. You know, I might be doing maxes and stuff again by the time this video comes out, but who knows? Uh, so again, a lot of rep work. But then afterwards, I'm coming in and I fill in the gaps. I work on my weak links, okay? Now people say, well, you're doing calves. That's not a weak link. Well, no, but my calves don't really get trained effectively with my other stuff, even though I have big calves. So I'm doing some calf work because why not? But outside of that, it really is just arm work. It's arm work. Why? Well, because for me, that's where I struggle. And I will see other lifters who will have big arms just from bench pressing and chin-ups, right? They might come in and bench and do chins and have big arms. And then maybe their pecs and lats lag. All right, well, then that's where maybe pullovers, some incline bench, or even, even possibly some flies or something, right? I don't really prescribe flies. But <laughs> uh, just pointing that out, that might be what you need, okay? also might need to just adjust the way you're benching of course but I mean that's a perfect example uh, maybe that person they're they're more arm dominant in terms of size and, and when we talk about that dominance we're talking about structure okay we're talking about your structure it's not it, it's nothing to do with all of your muscles per se right? it's usually your bone structure For example someone like me I have a very big rib cage very wide collar bone but I also have a long arms and fairly thin wrist bones and things. So for me, proportionately, you know, my, my torso develops well. So in my case, just arm work, arm work, arm work. And unfortunately for me, arms are heavily linked with, with aesthetics, you know. So in, in my case of my proportions, I'm always going to look big in person, but having that look is a little harder. It really requires a lot of arm work, you know, in addition to me getting leaner than I am. Um, but the idea is, is the same. Okay, the idea is the same. For me, of course, I develop posterior chain really, really easily. So in this case, uh, I may not be focusing on it quite as much. Just let the deadlifts, and if I need to, some glute ham raises occasionally sort it. But let the deadlifts sort it, right? But work on the rest of my leg. Work on my quads. Do the squats. Okay, do the squats. And then come in and do some calf work for lower. Um, but really upper is where a lot of us are going to have our weak links. But I will state for a lot of people out there, hamstrings are a weak link. Hamstrings are a weak link. And if that, you can tell from the way you deadlift, right? Uh, people say, what do you mean? Well, when you deadlift, if you always pull with a rounded lower back, no matter how you set up, you probably have weak hamstrings. Now, people say, well, these elite lifters, I see some elite lifters do it. Yeah, number one, they're elite lifters. Number two, their hamstrings are probably proportionately weak to their glutes, glutes and back. That's why they do it. And just because they have elite hamstrings, keep in mind, maybe their hamstrings aren't enough to get to the next level in their deadlift. Maybe their 800 deadlift is limited due to their hamstrings. Keep in mind, weak is relative. Weak is relative. But... Uh, again, this is this is an approach a lot of people can take. You know, come in, work your weak links. If your shoulders are a weak link, you know, doing your basic lifts, maybe your your shoulders and your biceps will come in and do do some curls and some laterals. Okay, 
Maybe consider an overhead press as a secondary exercise. But that's what I mean, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Work your big exercises and treat them seriously, push them hard, and then fill in the gaps. And if you've got limited gym time, you know, you're not gonna be able to do as many exercises. And I would argue for most people, I don't agree with a lot of this, this data and research about the number of sets uh, people are doing. I'm gonna come in and say maybe your weak links need about 20, 20 sets. Okay, but look at what, what I did for this training week that you're seeing this in. What was it? Uh, five sets of bench and pull-ups, both upper days, and five sets for biceps, five sets for triceps. Now, when you do the math on it, it ends up being 20 sets for arms. Because the bench and pull-ups work on but then we did another 10 sets of direct work. Okay, and that's, I think that's a good approach people can take also. I think that's a great approach people can take. You know, again, lower body can be a little different because a lot of times we can get away with, with a less total sets and develop it just due to the quality of the movements, right? And particularly plotted over time. You're, you're squatting and deadlifting heavy. But I think definitely this applies to, to upper body when people are looking at visual stuff. Because let's be honest, guys, most of you guys care about that a little bit more. And it is just not difficult to build a proportionate uh, lower body by comparison if you're actually consistently working it. The only reason people usually see a lagging lower body is purely because they've been lazy and did not dedicate equal time. Right? They didn't dedicate equal time to their squat and deadlift that they did to their, you know, their uh, big upper body movements. That, and that's purely it. That is the entirety of the reason. If you started with balance training, it, it never occurs. So, uh, I'm talking with some of that mostly upper body. But if, if you have major lower body weaknesses, the same thing could apply. Right? Maybe you need 20 sets for your, for your hamstrings. And again, this is a, an approach that I think works, works well for a lot of people. And that way you're, you're targeting in on your, your weak areas. You know, in my case, it's, it's arms, right? It really is arms. So we give them more attention until they get caught up. Uh, but the thing to remember with all of this is giving equal attention to your primary exercises, your big movements, and you need to be chasing performance on those. Even if you're doing five sets of 10 plus reps, you need to be chasing performance on those. You need to be chasing progressive overload, continually getting better at them. Because that will always be your primary mass builders, will be your main movements. And then the other stuff is used to fill in the gaps. And we need to be very clear on that. It's a point a lot of people miss. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.